He named out everybody he missed this morning but me. I guess he didn't miss me. You didn't you didn't say I wasn't here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we had a good we had a good service out at uh, Oak Grove this morning. Had had a lot of people there. More people than what I thought was gonna be there. Good service. Sweet Hour of Prayer, 445. sung that song in a long time. 122. Tell me the story of Jesus.
Faith is the victory. know this till I got here, but that's all right. I've sung it before. It's called Father Alone. Tempted and tried with hope me. in 
that bright mansion and we'll understand it all by and by Father alone will know all about Understand why. So cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine, and we'll understand it all by and by. Good evening. It's good to see everybody this afternoon. I'm so excited to be here tonight with y'all. I've had a wonderful time uh, in October, the second weekend of October. We always have our family reunion. It's a, it's a great time that family is able to get together. It's not a whole lot of that goes on anymore, but we're able to get together and, and enjoy fellowship and good food and all those things. And, and I have a wonderful family. They're, they're, they've always been supportive of me ever since I've been in the ministry. And it's things like that that gives you encouragement along the way. And I have an aunt here uh, that has never heard me preach. Last year at our reunion, she said, I would like for you to do something for me. I would, I would like for you to preach our next reunion on that Sunday night, if the Lord's willing, that I'd be able to come hear you. She was a very encouraging to me whenever I started. She said, I just want to tell you one thing. I want you to preach the word. I want you to preach the word. Don't ever be ashamed of it. Preach it. And she asked me today, she said, you remember what I said last year? I said, ooh, that's a long time ago, ain't Jamesy? She said, I wanted you to preach, and I'm able She's, she's actually, we've actually prayed for her. She was in the hospital for a long time. Didn't know if she might make it or not. But the Lord spared, spared her and was able to have her tonight with her daughter and her husband and, and the rest of our family and, and for me to preach. And it's a special occasion to me that I'm able to do that, that God would be able to allow me to do that tonight. So y'all just be with me tonight in, in prayer that God would use me as a vessel to preach not only to my aunt and to my family, but to every one of us here, that God would do a mighty work. I'm telling you, ever since I have went to Israel and came back, it seems like everywhere I go, somebody wants me to talk about Israel. And the more they get me talking, the more they get me fired up about it. How awesome and a mighty God we serve and what he has done for us. And I want us to look at some words tonight to be able to see some things about life, and where he takes us, where he leads us. It's a very important thing for us tonight. If you have your Bibles tonight, if you turn to John, John chapter uh, 10, verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. If you're able, if you would stand with me as we read God's Word here. John chapter 10, verse 27. This is what it says. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. A special night to me, Lord. Not only just to be able to preach, Lord, to be able to preach 
to somebody that wants to hear me preach, Lord. Lord, I recognize tonight there's nothing great about me. Father, it's not about me. It's about you tonight. Father, and I pray, Lord, as you use me as a vessel tonight, that your word would be brought clear to all of our hearts, souls, and minds. We would see it, we would understand it, Lord, and you would take it and use it for our good and your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. As the word is spoke here, I want us to think about that tonight. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. That's very important because, see, in all of our lives tonight, we have no idea where the Lord is going to lead us. He liable to lead us in any direction, in any kind of way He might lead us tonight, but what He has asked us to do is to follow Him. He has never asked us to question Him. He's never asked us to complain about it. He's asked us to follow and so we have no idea which way that will be. There's even a song written, Where He Leads, I Will Follow. You see, that's what He's wanting us to do tonight. And I want us to look at two different examples that's been set before us about leading and following the examples that's set before of us. I want us to talk tonight a little bit about the desert. I want us to talk about the desert and understand about that. You know, the desert is not a place that most any of us would want to be in. It's not a place that we would want to find ourselves in because it's, it's nothing there. It's some ground that we wouldn't want to be in. It's going to be hot there. It's going to be all sorts of things that would be there, and we would not want to be a part of that. But I want us to look at a few scriptures tonight that talks about the desert. Because you see, at some point in time in our lives, we're going to find ourselves in the desert. We're going to find ourselves in a place that you and I really don't want to be. It's going to be a place that's going to be uncomfortable to us. It's going to be a place that we'd rather not be. We could think of a million other places to be, and why are we there? But it's always going to be a, for a purpose why we find ourselves in those places. And how we're going to... How we're going to overcome that is where he leads us through those places that we follow him. That we follow him. There's a great example in that is we look back and we think about Moses leading the children of Israel. You see, they, they were in bondage. And they were going to be taken out of bondage and they were going to be brought to the promised land. Now, you and I would be excited about that tonight if we were in bondage and we knew that we were going to be taken out of bondage and we were going to be brought into a promised land. That same thing is setting before us tonight that Jesus would come to us full of sin in bondage and say, I'm going to take you out of that and I'm going to lead you to the promised land. I'm going to lead you to eternal life in heaven is what I'm going to do for you. You see, Moses... He wanted Moses to be that person that lead, to lead them out of the bondage to the promised land. Guess how they were going to get there? They were going to get there through the desert. Now, can you imagine right after that was approached to them that they said, oh, I'm excited, I'm fixing to get out of bondage, but are you crazy? You mean I've got to go through the desert to get there? That's a place filled with the flowing of milk and honey, a place that they really wanted to be, but they really didn't want to go through the desert. Sounds like a lot of us. We want to get somewhere, but we don't realize that we've got to follow him and, and we've got to go down the paths that he lays out. God's God tonight. God could have took him and he could have just put him over in the promised land. But as, as we look at them, you and I would be the same way. They wouldn't learn much out of that. They wouldn't learn the sacrifices and what was paid to get them over to the promised land had he just put them there. He was going to bring them through the way of the desert. He is going to bring you and I through life. And we're going to find ourselves in that desert sometimes. And we're going to find ourselves in those situations. But we're not there to be as the children of Israel was to murmur and complain about why I'm having to go through that desert. He didn't say that. He didn't. 
He didn't say that. He said, I just want you to follow. So I want you to look over tonight in Exodus. I want you to look over there, and I want you to look in verse uh, in chapter 14. And I want to just listen at a few words that was spoken to them as they were preparing to make this journey through the desert. Over in Exodus chapter 14, verse 12, verse 12 through verse 15, this is what it says. Is it not this, the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Now, the wilderness they're talking about is the desert. That we should die in the desert. Listen to what Moses tells them. And Moses said unto them, People, fear ye not, stand still. You need to underline that, stand still, because that's what we all need to do tonight when God's speaking to us to just stand still. He said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Why therefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, he's telling them that, listen, I'm fixing to take you out of a place that you really don't want to be, but I'm going to lead you through a place that you really don't want to be. But I want you to stand still, and I want you to hear what's going to be spoken. I want you to understand, even though that you are going to walk through that desert, God's going to be with you. God's going to fight every fight for you, and he's going to fight every battle, and you will be victorious, and you will go to the promised land. That's the beginning. That's encouraging words, right? We know the story about what takes place there, how they go down to the Red Sea and, and, and think that's the end and, the, and the, the sea opens up and they go through. We know the story about how that, that they were faced with those things and God wanted them to go forward. He wants you and I tonight to go forward. Even though we find ourselves that we're in the midst of a place and a situation in our lives and in our family and all around us, what he wants us to do is to go forward. He says, follow me. Don't question me. Follow me. I've never led you to a place that I would leave you. I've never led you to a place that I wouldn't see you through. I've never led you to a place that I've ever failed you. I'm just asking, follow that's not very hard for us to understand tonight, that we just need to follow him. God always will make the way. After all this takes place, and they go through the Red Sea over in verse 31, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed, and the Lord and his servant Moses. You can look down in verse 1 out of verse uh, in chapter 15 and you can see they sang. Moses and the children, they sang unto the Lord. They were happy about what they saw. Sounds like a lot of us today. God will get us out of a situation and we'll be happy. We'll be sure to recognize him and thank him for what he's done for us. But as we go on in the story, we find that that's not where it ends. It doesn't take long for them to start complaining about being in the desert. Someone that's going to be able to lead you in the desert through the Red Sea that nothing happens to you is going to be the same person that would be able to feed you in the desert. It would be the same one that would give you water in the desert. They started seeing that a whole lot different. It sounds like Christians today that we can find ourselves praising Him one day and complaining the next. We can find ourselves thanking Him for what He's done today, but whenever the moment we find ourselves in a place that we don't want to be, we complain about it. We complain about it, and then we see that that's what was going on at that time. God was just trying to get them in the promised land. He's just trying to get you and I into heaven. He knows there's a life that you and I are going to have to go through to get there. And it's going to never be easy. It's never going to be easy. 
The desert is not always a bad place to be, church. It'll do something for us when we recognize that. If we'll stand still just long enough not to complain about it, but trust in the God that's got us there. As he was bringing them through, all they would have had to do was trust the God that got them there. I like it. It says over in Psalm 78, 52, but he brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep through the desert. He didn't say, I got them stuck in the desert. He said, I, left, I led them through the desert. Over in Psalms 84, 5 and 6, Blessed are those st whose strength is in you as they pass through the desert valley. They make it a place of springs. You can turn the desert into something wonderful. You and I can turn that and make that into a situation that's wonderful when we know who is leading us. And if we're willing to follow, we should find ourselves there. You and I need to find ourselves in the desert and look to the one that wants to lead us through. That he wants to lead us through. It is not always the bad place to be. God is going to show us that. He's going to give us an example of his own son, of his own son going into the desert. We're going to look at that tonight. I want us to look over in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, and I want us to look through verses 1 through 12. Now I want us to think about it. Moses was going to take them out of bondage, and he was going to lead them through the desert, and he was going to lead them into the promised land. Now we find that Jesus is going to go into the desert. The desert's not always the bad place to be, but it's what you find there. It's what you're looking for is what's real important to us tonight. Over in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That is the desert. Now I want you to understand what's taking place here. Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. He could have left there and he could have went straight into his ministry in Galilee. He could have went straight there and he could have started, but he knew that there was a reason he needed to go into the desert. Why did he need to go into the desert? Because there was going to be no cell phones there. There was going to be no cars going by. There was going to be no phone calls. There was not going to be any movies. There was not going to be any hunting, and there was not going to be any fishing. There was not going to be any shopping going on. What he was going into the desert for, he wanted to get along with his father, and he wanted him to minister to him because he knew the battles that he was fixing to face, what he was fixing to go up against as he started his ministry. That's you and I tonight that we find ourselves, I need to get in a place where there is nothing out there, that there is nothing that would take me away from being able to get in contact with God, to listen, to stand still and hear everything that he's wanting to tell me tonight. Because he is wanting to lead me through this life into eternity. Jesus knew it was not going to be easy is the reason he went. As I read that and as I thought about that, that's where a lot of the Christians fail today. That's where the people, because they believe when I walk down the aisle and I surrender my life to Christ and I go and somebody puts me under that water, life is okay now. That's ex exactly, Jesus had just been baptized and had to go into the wilderness to get along with God because who was going to show up right there with him? Satan. If Satan was going to follow Jesus into the wilderness and into the desert, he's going to follow you and he's going to follow me. And he tried everything he could do to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. He is going to try everything he can possibly do to tempt you and I tonight. To cause us to fall and to cause us to stumble. Jesus knew where he needed to be. He knew where he needed to be. 
It goes on and it tells us about that, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. He was just like you and I would be when we find ourselves there. We would be worn out. We would be tired. We would be hungry from being out in the desert. But we would gain so much from that by being there. Don't always count the situations that you and I are in in our life and face as a bad place to be. What he is trying to do is he said, if I can get them there, it looks like nowhere else is working. If I get them in certain situations, they will listen. They will hear me. And it won't be short-lived. They will understand it when they hear from me. You think about all the things that you and I have seen over the last few years in our lives whenever you see 9-11 take place and all of a sudden the whole world, the whole nation wants to go to God because He is the only one it looks like can help. Whenever we have our our disasters that we've having from hurricanes and fires and, and shooting and school shootings and all the disasters, the first thing we want to do is we want to find God. We want to find Him, but it's short-lived as it was with the children of Israel. It doesn't take us long to go back to being normal, complaining and murmuring and griping about everything about our lives. And I can only imagine that God said, I guess I didn't keep them there long enough. Because had they been there long enough and stood still, they would recognize I'm the one that's brought them through where they are today. I hope that they can look on their lives and see that there's not one situation in their life that's ever been too big for me. There's never been a situation that I couldn't handle for them. They won't stand still. They won't follow. And I'm trying my best to lead. I'm trying my best to lead. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. We know what Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said to him, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word out of God. You see, that's the reason we need to be in that place that we listen to God in that desert of ours, that we understand what God's saying through His Word. If there's one thing that you and I, as we head out into the middle of nowhere, in a place that we don't want to be, there's, if there's one thing that we can take, is God's Word. God's Word that He's going to assure us He's just leading us through. He's just leading us through. It's not all the temptations. Most of us, as we would have showed up after that being hungry, we would have wanted to turn the stones into bread. Jesus says, I'm out in this desert because I want to know that they know that they know they need the Word. There's more than, than the bread. It's the Word. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, and showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give to thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will give it. Offering it all up. For thou, therefore, will worship me. All shall be thine. I thought about that. I was able to experience the mountain where Satan took Jesus and said, You see all of this. It'll all be yours. It'll all be yours right now. If you'll just bow down to me. You wonder why we have to go out in the desert and be all alone with God? Satan comes to us and offers us everything the world has to offer. It can be yours. It can all be yours tonight if you'll just turn to me. God said, 
You want to resist that temptation? You've got to be all along with me. You've got to be in the desert with me tonight that you know my word and you're willing to follow. That you're willing to follow. It's not about all those things. As the scripture says, what is it if you gain this whole world that he would give you and you would lose your only soul? Jesus was going into the desert for you and for me tonight. Making the way. Making the way of what would be coming. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone only shalt thou serve. He said, there's going to come a day if I don't go out in this desert and I don't face Satan. There's going to come a day that he's going to offer that up to my children. He's going to offer that to give them everything that the world has to give. And if they don't know the word and they're not all along with me, they're going to give in. They're going to give in. I want them to know to stand still. They will know my voice. And follow me. There's not a greater person tonight to be leading us to the promised land than the Lord Jesus Christ. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pencil and of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. If we find ourselves out there saying, Lord, I don't understand why you can't do better than that for me. I don't understand why you have me in this place, in this situation in my life. What we're telling him is we don't trust you that you're going to lead us through. What we're telling him is we don't think that you can handle the situation that I'm in. What he wants to hear is, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. If there's anybody that knows what's best, you do. I'm going to follow you. That we should always find ourselves there in those situations that we trust him and we believe in him. Jesus knows what's best for us tonight. I would say tonight, how many of you tonight that feel like a situation in your life that you are in that desert? You're not all alone. God's trying to use that to speak to us. He's trying to use that to minister to us in every way. Are you willing to stand still? Are you willing to hear the voice? It's not an easy place to be. Matter of fact, he said it was the life that you and I are going to live is never going to be easy. He says it's going to rain on us. It's going to rain on the just and unjust just alike. But what he did say, that if we stand still and we listen to him and follow him, he'll take care of the rest. How many times do we... Do we find ourselves over on the other side complaining? Murmuring about, why me? There's plenty more people that you could have picked out besides me. Why my situation? Why did this have to happen to me? And he's trying to remind us all the way. Remember? You remember when they were in the bondage and I was going to take them to the promised land? 
Remember when you came to me and you said, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the one to forgive me of all of my sins as far as the east is to the west to remember no more. Remember when you came to me and I put my loving arms around you because I'd already defeated everything that was to be defeated. And I said, no problem. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I'm leading you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. It may just be, it may just be that it's got to be through the desert, but I'm leading. Are you following? Do you trust me? He says, if you love me, you'll commit Keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll follow. Wherever that leads, you'll follow. I would say tonight that we've all can take a long look at our lives and say, I've never understood a lot of things that I had to go through. I don't understand why I had to go through some of the heartaches that I had to go through. I don't understand what the purpose of that is. But we should say tonight, God, forgive us. Forgive us and have mercy on us that we would ever question you about how you're leading our life. If we know tonight that we know that we know that He is our Savior, just follow. If you're here tonight and you don't know Him as a personal Savior, it's going to be hard to follow Him because you don't know Him. But for the ones that know Him, follow Him. What he has done for others that we read about, he'll do for you and he'll do for me. The same ones that he has saw through, he will see through. The same ones that he promised, I will always be there and I will never leave you nor forsake you, is always the same word to all of us tonight. To all of us tonight. You can actually look over in the first Corinthians chapter ten, verses five through eleven or ten or whatever, and you can see what was taking place about a reminder. Don't fall as the others fail. Don't find yourselves doing the same thing they did. Don't find yourself in the same situations. Don't be murmuring about every little thing that goes on. Trust me. Trust me in every situation. As they come tonight and as they play, I don't know what the Lord is speaking to anybody's heart in here tonight, but if you find yourself and you realize, you know, He has put me through some things, and I think I've done more complaining than I have following. Maybe tonight would be the night to say, Lord, forgive me of that. Lord, as I look back on that tonight, I see that you had put me out in that desert for one thing, to draw me closer to you. And I complain, forgive me. I'm guilty of that tonight. Just because I wouldn't stand still long enough for him to explain to me why I was there. He was trying to use that moment and that time to do a work in my life. He said, your biggest problem is you got too much going on all around you. 
You ever had three or four people talking to you at the same time? And you try to keep up with all three conversations? And when it's all over with, you can't remember what either one of them was saying. That's how we'll find ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ if we're not careful. But trust me, if we get out in the middle of nowhere, you'll hear what he has to say as they play. The altars are open. If you need to come down for whatever reason, I'd pray for you, pray with you, Brother Blaine, whatever. You can pray without either one of us. Whatever it is that the Lord leads on your heart as they, as they sing. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The pass of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming. Once again, it's been a special night to have all of my family here to be able to preach God's Word. I'm glad He's given me the opportunity. I hope that everybody has a good week this week. I hope that we're reminded often. For thy words have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. As we go throughout this week, He's already made and set the example for us as we go out throughout this week that we'll be excited about being a child of God and where he's leading us. Let us pray. Father, I thank you tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, for using me. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you've given me the opportunity, Lord. As I look, I could probably say, why me? But I thank you, Lord, that you've used me. I'm humble tonight, Lord, because I recognize, Lord, without you, I'm nothing tonight. I recognize tonight, Lord, I need to be in the desert more than anybody, Lord, that I'm listening to what you have to say. I'm walking the path that you want me to walk. Lord, I, I pray that you would lead us all this week. Lord, as we go to our separate homes and our separate ways and our separate jobs and schools and wherever we may have to go this week, God, that we recognize that you can lead if we'll just follow. I thank you for everyone here tonight, Lord. I thank you for every family that's represented. I pray for them, Lord. I pray for this church. I pray for every church, Lord, that represents you. Lord, that preaches the word, Lord. As you said, the word, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would lift them up, Lord. We're living in a lost and dying world. 
Father, we're living in a world that's full of evil because people don't know you. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would be with all of our leaders in every way, that they would turn to you, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, for everyone that's sick, that's on our prayer list, the ones that's suffering, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just meet their needs. Father, I pray for the families that's lost loved ones throughout this week. Comfort them, Lord. God, speak to them. Give them peace in their heart. Father, I want to tell you tonight, thank you, and we love you, that you sent your only son to die for us. And through him, we can make it home. Thank you for that tonight. Be with us now as we go. Give safe travel, Lord, to us all, Lord. Protect us in every way. Thank you, Lord, for being our God, our Savior, Lord of Lords, and King of Kings. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.